Hi, I'm Bob. Let's solve computer exercise 9. We will compare the ordinary least squares OLS and the least absolute deviations LAD estimates. For part 1, the estimated equation by OLS is as follows. The families eligible for the 401 plan have $9,713 more financial assets than the other families on average, holding income, age and gender fixed. The difference is statistically significant at the 1% level. We do a BP test for heteroscedasticity in Part 2. We obtain the residuals from the OLS model and then square the residuals. Next, we regress the squared residuals on all the explanatory variables. The null hypothesis is that the coefficients on all explanatory variables are zero. The F statistic is 59.97 and its p-value is zero to four decimal places. The LM statistic is also large. We reject the null hypothesis and conclude that heteroscedasticity is pleasant at the 1% level. In other words, the error term is not independent of the explanatory variables. In Part 3, we estimate the model by the least absolute deviations LAD method. The estimated equation is as follows. The families eligible for the 401k plan have $3,737 more financial assets than the other families on average, holding age, income and gender fixed. The difference between families with and without 401k eligibility is much lower than that by OLS. For the last part, we see from the histogram plots that the distribution of the financial assets is severely right skewed. The sample mean is $19,000, but the median is $2,000. The OLS estimate is the average partial effect while the LAD estimate is the median partial effect. The effects differ because the 401 plan eligibility has different influences on different quantiles of the outcome. We can see it clearly when we run the quantile regressions for the 25th, 50th and 75th quantiles. The 401k plan eligibility effect is much higher for the higher quantiles. The median is the 50th quantile. The mean is at a much higher quantile than the median. So the average partial effect is higher than the median partial effect.
Let's do computer exercise ten. In the first data set, the fraction of the man who received drop trailing is zero point four two, while the fraction is zero point zero seven in the second data set. As mentioned in the exercise, the first is from an experiment, and the assignment to the drop trailing is random. They are experimental data. By contrast, the second contains long experimental data or observational data. The individuals chose whether they took part in the drop training. In part two, we estimate a simple regression model by OLS. On average, participating in drop training is estimated to increase. Real earnings by one thousand seven hundred and ninety-four dollars. For Park Street, the estimate of the drop trailing effect is one thousand six hundred and eighty dollars on average after adding the control variables to the model. It does not change much because the data are experimental data. The assignment to the drop training is random in the sense that the assignment is not based on the control variables. In other words, there is no systematic difference in the control variables between the workers receiving drop training and those not. So the drop trailing variable is roughly unrelated to the control variables, leading to a very small omitted variable bias. We estimate the simple and multiple regressions using observational data in Part Four. In the simple regression, the coefficient on the drop training is negative because it suffers from omitted variable bias. After adding the control variables to the model, the drop trailing effect becomes positive, but not statistically significant. The inclusion of the control variables alleviates the omitted variable bias. In Part Five, the average of the 74 and 75 earnings differs substantially between the experimental data and the observational data. Obviously, they represent different populations. In Park Six, we re-estimate the models for low-income workers. The estimates of the drop training effect on real earnings are positive and significant using both datasets, and the magnitudes are also close. For Park Seven, we estimate the simple regressions for unemployed men. The trailing estimate is 3.803 using observational data. It is 1.842 using the experimental data. For long experimental or observational data, the drop trailing effects are different for different groups of workers defined by income or employment status. It is essential to be aware of the characteristics of the workers we are talking about and estimating. For the experimental data, we don't worry about it because the assignment to the training is random.
Let's find answers to computer exercise 11. We estimate the model and find that the coefficient on execution is 0 0.085. The t-statistic is 0 0.30, and its p-value against a two-sided alternative is 0 0.769. The positive estimate provides no evidence for a deterrent effect of capital punishment. The effect is not statistically from zero at any reasonable level. For part two, 34 executions are reported for Texas during 1993. The average number of executions for the other states is 0 0.92, with a minimum of zero and a maximum of 11. We add a dummy variable for Texas to the model. The t-statistic for the dummy is not large, minus 0 0.32. Texas appears not an outlier. In part 3, we add the lag murder rate to the model. We create lag variables for different subgroups in data using the by prefix and the subscripts. We usually sort the observations in order before that. We can list the variables to ensure they are correct. The regression gives an estimate of minus 0 0.071 for the coefficient on the execution variable, implying that one more execution is estimated to reduce the murder rate by 0 0.07 murders per 100,000 people after controlling for employment and the past murder rate. That is, about 14 more executions will reduce one murder per 100,000 people on average. The effect is small, but it is statistically significant at the 5% level, with a t-statistic of minus 2.34. For part 4, the estimate for the coefficient on Texas is minus 1.02, and the t-statistic is tiny, minus 0.37, it is not an outlier. Thank you very much for solving the computer exercises with me. See you soon. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.